Welcome to the Wellness Revolution Podcast, the radio show all about wellness in your mind, body, spirit, personal growth, sex, and relationships. Stay tuned for weekly interviews featuring guests that have achieved physical, mental, and spiritual health in their lives. If you'd like to have access to our entire back catalog, visit drveronica.com for instant access. And here is your host, Dr. Veronica. This is Dr. Veronica, medical doctor, medical intuitive. You can find me always. You know, Dr. Veronica, just type in your computer, Dr. Veronica, and you're going to find me on Wellness for the Real World on the radio, but also on the Internet, in social media, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere to bring you new information to understand your life better. And when you understand your life better, your purpose, where you are walking and where you will walk and how to create your journey, you will have better health. And so now today I have this guest who this is going to be fascinating to every single person because we all love our names. And it's so important what our names are. And they have a particular meaning. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. You guys know I always got to tell you a story to keep you going. And I throw out all my business out there. But this is a this is a Veronica story that you will like. And anybody else out there named Veronica, you might know the story. So when my parents married, they happened to be Catholic. And so they had my sister. They named her Pamela. And when it came time to do the baptism, as an infant in Philadelphia, they didn't want to baptize her because she didn't have a name from the Bible. So now she did get baptized <laughs> because my mother figured out said she's Mary or whatever to get it done. Uh, this is why my mother is has left the Catholic religion because you know they're gonna dot the I's and cross the T's. Doesn't matter if we're getting to heaven or not. We're gonna make sure that we follow whatever rule we think that we should follow. <sighs> my mom is a quick learner. Two years later, I am born, and she names me after a Catholic saint, Saint Veronica. Now, there's a whole story surrounding Veronica, but and I'm not going to tell you the whole Veronica story, and it really has to do with where I've walked in my life, and it my soul has walked, actually, because you have a soul journey and soul life. But Veronica is some of the common meanings. One is true image. True image. Now think about it. I'm telling you, wellness for the real world. True image. And also, it's a flower. There is a Veronica flower. So if you wonder why I'm here and I'm straight talking, I'm going to give you the truth because the truth will heal you and the truth shall set you free. And here I am, Veronica, telling you the truth. True image. Now it's not just Veronica and Veronica, Dorothy, gift from God, (laughs) and then Anderson, son of Andrew. That's my full birth name. My added name is the one I take when I got married. And I'm going to tell you about my husband's name because there's something interesting about it. And I think the guests will find this story interesting. My husband, his name is Abel, A-B-E-L. And um, the name is from the Bible originally. Some people might pronounce it Abel, but he's from a French speaking country. So Abel. When I saw my husband's name and I see it now, that name just smiles at me. I look at it and I see a smile. I see his name, the lettering of it, and I just feel like the letters and words and everything, first and last name together, are smiling at me. I don't, and I never could figure out, well, what is this that's going on? Now, I, I will let you know that I have been with my the, the soul of my husband in past lives. In fact, we've shared uh, more than one. I We had a very, very significant life in 2500 BC in what is now ancient Egypt. And that's a story for another show. Uh, but his name smiled at me. And I, I, I believe that was one of the signals that I, I didn't even know exactly what I was seeing, but it's I, I don't even know what words to use, but his name smiles at me. So we all wonder, what do our names mean? Why did we get them? What can we tell from somebody else's name? So I brought to you a name expert, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. And I'm going to give you her website several times because you're going to be fascinated with what we're going to talk about and want to know where do I find, where do I get more information? Knowthename.com and bestnamemeanings.com. 
when you name your child, it is very significant. Think about it deeply. Don't just throw it there and think, I mean, maybe you want to make up something. But all of my children, even my son who was adopted, has a very significant name. (laughs) It was important to us what his name was. To me, it was important what his birth name was. I didn't want to change his name because you can adopt and change a child's name. But no, it was important to me that his name is Joel, J-O-E-L, and pronounce Joel, Joel, Yahweh is God. That's what Joel means, biblical name, prophet of the Bible. So Sharon Lynn Wyeth, welcome to Wellness for the Real World. It's a pleasure to be here, Dr. Veronica. Thank you for inviting me. First, tell us, how did you first start studying names in the first place? In my seventh year of teaching, when I was making seating charts before the year started, I realized that my brain was telling me things about the students, and I hadn't known them yet. Now, my brain is very well trained in patterns because I have a major in math and I have my master's degree, and I was teaching math. And so when it dawned on me that my brain was doing that, I went back and said, I'm going to write down my impression of every single person by their name, and I'm going to look at it later because I was very curious. You know, after I got over the embarrassment of, oh, my gosh, I'm thinking something about somebody I haven't met. And so um, three months later, when I looked at it, I thought, this is really accurate. So my brain, trained in patterns, has picked up something of names. How do I make it conscious? And it took me 15 years of working on it to get all the nuances and to figure things out. Like the first name is the essence of who we are. The middle name is where we go under stress. If you believe in reincarnation, I believe that's where we go because that represents our last lifetime. And so we had a whole lifetime doing it that way. So that's why we go there under stress. And the last name represents our environmental influences. And then you have three parts of a name, like you have the first letter position, the first vowel position, middle letter position, and end lasting letter position. And you interpret every letter differently. And then... Just like how kids can sit next to each other in a classroom, and if they like the person, they act one way, but if they don't like the person, they act a different way, it's the same thing. You learn how the letters act and influence each other to bring up even more qualities and characteristics. Okay, Sharon. So give us some examples. Your name is Sharon, which is spelled like most people say Sharon, but you pronounce it Sharon. How significant is it, the spelling versus the pronunciation? Well, mine is a Hebrew name, and so if you were living in Israel, you would pronounce what we call Sharon on paper, Sharon. Um, And it's very important because you read the letters and their placement for what they are. And then if the sound of the name introduces what is normally represented by other letters, you also read those. Because it just says that these are subtle influences that are also affecting the person. Okay, so I told you about my, my husband's name, Abel, which here we pronounce Abel, but he's Abel which has that E-L on the end. Um, You said, you know, it's a Hebrew name. So what is it about that name that is special? I mean, something about it special to me. I think it's special to other people, too. And I also know my husband is born with a nine life path, which is very spiritual. Abel, what can you tell us about that? Well, it tells us that he has a tendency to be a workaholic, but he knows how to relax. When he's done with the day, he's done. And then if he he could get somebody else to get up and go to the bathroom for him, he'd let them. Because once (laughs) he's done, he's done. Okay? Um, It says that he's very sensitive to criticism because he does his very best, and he works to please others. He doesn't work for the money. That's a nice side benefit. But he's really working to please other people, and he's very competitive, and he has a nice, strong sense of self. Anyone who has the E-L combination in their name, like a bell has, I, in my head, it stands for Elohim, and that means we're striving to be like God. We're striving to be as close to the divine as we can be. And so the challenge, because there's always a challenge in every combination, is not to let the ego get involved and to keep the purity of heart. And so um, with a bell also... He's very sensitive to the people around him, so I would say he was very intuitive, and he just feels things or knows things because he's very sensitive to what other people are radiating and what they're feeling. That all comes out in his name. 
So what, why is 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 it when I'm looking at it and other people possibly when they see names like I'm looking at it, like I said to you I feel like his name smiles at me is 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 I, you you described him very perfectly of course <laughs> <laughs> of course you've described him very perfectly but why do I when I look at it I feel like it's smiling at me that's just the energy because, of it because your name is very well balanced between the etheric and the grounded, the earthly, and the uh, aesthetic of what's out there, the intuitive. And when you're looking at his name, it says, here is a person who is striving to be their best and live to what they know or they think that God wants of them or the divine expects of them. And so it makes you smile because you think, here's another seeker. Here's another person on their path doing the best that they can. I'm going to (laughs) cry. I feel like here I am. I'm in the middle of the radio and I'm crying because, um, you know, my, my husband is my soulmate and has been for quite a long time. And there's been times where I've gone into past lives and seen him and, you know, my issues possibly with just trusting people around me. There's times where he's appeared to me and says, you know, I'm going to always be with you. Um, and so when you describe him this way and um, the connection between us two, it's it's just beautiful. Um, so now I, I, he has a name, which is West African from his uh, native tribe. I'm going to give you our last name. I share that last name with him now. The Digby, D E D E G B E. In the language of Fawn, he tells me it means slowly goes life. And he can also tell me the origins of the name and the first person that had it, which is, see, this is the beauty when you are from a place where people know back and back and back and back. Um, here in America, um, a lot of us, especially somebody like me who is a descendant of slaves, We've lost uh, a lot of our original ancestry, but my husband, Abel, um, comes from a place where it's Benin, where actually six million slaves left Africa. And when I went back there for my husband became my husband's brother became the chief of the family. We actually went by the ocean where they have a monument called the Gate of No Return. And this is where slaves actually walked over and left the continent of Africa. And there was a gentleman there who actually told the story to me that said, the reason why you're back here now is because this is where your soul left. And so when you do this ritual that I'm about to tell you about, this is what the people who are leaving, they would do this ritual so their soul would come back to where they left. And so this is why you're here. So I ended up meeting and falling in love with this man who we've been together before, but I believe it was likely where how I got between Africa and America as a soul. He was part of that life too in an interesting way. Um, but his name Didigby, D-E-D-E-G-B-E, a West African name, not common at all here, obviously. What do you, what can you tell us about that type of name? What's very interesting is that all the vowels are congruent because they're all the same. And the name also has the divine in it. It says, We are here, we bring people to us that love the divine. We are here for ritual. We are here for celebration. We are here to remember to love, and we are bringing love into the world. And we have change factor in this name so that people that have experienced hurt or heartache and and just have frozen themselves and are now existing instead of living, those are the ones that we bring to us so that we can remind them who they are and what their purpose is and that they are here to love the divine. Wow. And <laughs> see, I'm, I obviously am seeing some of this. What I would like you to help the audience do now is, well, first let me tell you, Sharon Lynn Wyeth, knowthename.com, bestnamemeanings.com, knowthename.com, bestnamemeanings.com. Help us begin to understand how to evaluate. Wait, first, do you have a book that we can go read? I know you do. I saw it here somewhere, but I got so much writing. Um, know the name, know the person. Know the name, know. Is that the one that you would recommend that people go read? 
That's the first one in the series. And know the name, know the person, decoding letters to reveal secrets hidden in names, literally teaches the entire system so that you can take anyone's name and know their personality predispositions. And then the follow-along, which is know the name, know the spirit, is literally let's now look at our names from a soul's perspective. What is our contract with the divine? What are we here to share? What are we here to learn? Why are we here? What's our purpose? And that literally is a, like a lookup book. So anybody who doesn't want to learn the system and they just want to know their purpose, they can literally look it up and say, the first letter in my name is, let's go look that up and go all the way through that way. And then that book also says, what if what your personality is wanting, as described in the first book, doesn't agree with what your soul is desiring? How do you resolve that conflict? And that's also in the book. Oh, wow. All right. This is this is obviously a, a, we could do just a show on each of those. But let's start with personality. What are some of the uh, personality traits that um, you can say? OK, so so I have in front of me the program di- director, Dwayne, who has an interesting spelling, D-W-A-I-N, but it's pronounced Dwayne. <laughs> So what can we tell people about, can you break it down with some letters to give examples of what Dwayne could learn, just so people can start to begin to hear how you use this? So D-W-A-I-N, Dwayne, what can we learn from each of those letters about Dwayne? Okay, so it starts with a D. So anyone's name who starts with a D, my mnemonic device for remembering it is the D stands for the divine. So these are people who like ritual or religion or the divine incorporate into their life, but they like the routine. They like the knowingness. So they're usually very well versed in some kind of a religious theology that is their grounding or is their beginning point. That's the gift side of it. And so they have this relationship with the divine. The challenge side of the D is that they like clutter and they always have to have something of clutter around them. And the reason for that, even if it's just a drawer, but sometimes it's just an area The reason is clutter gets their brain thinking. It's like the key to the car's ignition that gets it started. If there's clutter, they can look at that and their brain starts saying, oh, how am I going to clean up this clutter? And the brain starts working. And when everything's too clean, too neat, they look at that and they think, oh, my gosh, how do I get my brain started? And so uh, that's the letter D. Then we go to the W. W stands for wisdom. And in the W... um, It says that we don't like to make the same mistakes twice. We're going to learn from our experiences. And when we're learning from those experiences, we're going to evaluate what we do, and we're going to constantly improve on what we're doing because we judge ourselves for making the same mistake twice, and we're very hard on us. So we don't need anybody else judging us because we learn through experiences. And the more experiences they have, the wiser they get. They're able to take their knowledge and turn it into wisdom and use it in new ways. Then the first vowel of an A says that he's a workaholic, but when he's done working, he's absolutely done, that he's very sensitive to criticism, wants to shut down and quit when criticized, that he's very observant. He doesn't miss much. He doesn't say all that what he sees, but he doesn't miss much because he's really watching and always taking in that which he observes. Then the I in the second to last position says that he's very independent and he doesn't like to be underneath somebody else's thumb. By the way, the A also says he doesn't need to be the boss, but he needs to work for somebody who's competent. And if the person or the boss is not competent, then he'll slowly take over because the job needs to get done. Okay? Yes. And then the N at the end of the name says that he's, I, I call it, maybe my languaging isn't the greatest, but I call it the anal retentive to the details. He can drive everybody nuts with the details, but his memory is very, very good. And it's a nice balance because the N is so detail oriented and the D is so globally oriented. So it's a nice balance to be able to sing the forest and the trees. Wow. <laughs> and he's shaking his head everything you said here. So this is amazingly accurate. The difference between, let's say somebody has a, a short name with a few letters or a long name with a lot of letters. So, you know, my name, Veronica, has got eight letters in it. And um, also my, my chosen name, I've always been complicated. And so um, I, I, for whatever reason, you know, have not given up my uh, birth last name of Anderson. My last name is Anderson to Digby, but I feel really uh, I'm wedded to my to Digby. 
what is it that somebody who has like a, a, a short name, Joe Smith versus Veronica, Dorothy, Anderson, Digby? <laughs> it literally gives the picture. It doesn't matter whether a name's short or long. It gives a picture of why that person's here and what they're focusing on. And it's like laser sharpness. If you've got a shorter name, what you're here to do is laser sharp and you're really focused on less things to do them to the depth and really, really well. When you've got a longer name, it says you've got to have your hand in many pies and to much that is given, much is expected. And so those people need to be very busy all the time because they're constantly learning, they're constantly sharing, they're constantly giving. They have a lot more to do in the world um, a lot more in different areas versus one with a short name is more intensified or laser focused in smaller areas can be just as important. Let's just go into a little bit of background information. Do you call this nemology? Pronounce what it's called. I call it nemology science. Actually, my dad named it. Okay. But because you cannot trademark the word name, we spell it with the Latin spelling N E I M ology. So it has a Latin spelling so that I could trademark it. Beautiful. So we're you we are at the source right now, people, the source of this name system. And it's a name science because you see she just accurately described our program director here at the station. He didn't he shook his head up and down and completely, especially talking about the boss thing and taking over. So this really has there. It's got to be some science behind this or she could not be so accurate. Let's talk about name naming rituals. Um, Native Americans, they have naming rituals. Um, some other cultures have naming ri- rituals. I, you know, there's a, there's a roots is coming out again. A lot of the original roots, the big part when they say they bring them up to the sky. And my, my, my husband says they do have rituals like in Africa. They put up the baby to the sky. His name shall be Kunta Kente. Um, naming rituals. We don't seem to have a lot of naming rituals in, in the United States. Native Americans naming rituals. Tell us a, a, a about a few naming rituals. Well, it's interesting because in the Native American, they start, but it's the elder or the shaman or the the wise man of the tribe that's literally doing the naming because they trust him to get it right, okay? And when you're looking at the ancient religions, when there were still only seven on the planet before they multiplied and divided and everybody kind of made up their own, What they all agreed upon was that the incoming soul impresses upon the one naming them what they want to be called. So when they're going through a naming ritual, they're literally saying, we understand the importance of a name, and we're celebrating that name, and we're sending it to the person that we know or think will be the clearest in receiving that name. And so, therefore, it's celebrated. Just like the Jewish faith has a naming celebration and that they usually don't share the child's name until that celebration comes and they present the child to the public or to their close friends, and it's a big, like, a luncheon type thing, and they celebrate the naming of the child and the entrance or the joining of that soul to everyone else. In Turkey, they give it to the name to the oldest male in the family. So you and I could have a child... But if we have a male relative that's older than us, whomever the oldest one is, that's who's going to name the child. In Russia, the middle name always contains the father's name so that the father is remembered or his influence is also felt on the child because the child has come through the mother's body and then they believe that this balances out um, the energy so that the middle name is always a reflection of the dad's name. And in the different religions... Um, they have different, the religions literally carry it with the different understandings of the importance of names. Think about the Bible for a minute. In Genesis, we see Abraham and Sarai, and God comes down and renames them Abraham and Sarah, giving both of them an A-H. And the A-H in nameology science says, I'm now on mission for God. And that is when Abraham and Sarai started their mission for God. Um, then he comes down and he changes the name Jacob to Israel and later on Paul to Saul. And it's even Moses said when he could have asked the burning bush anything, he says, what is your name? Knowing that if he just knew the name, he would know all about the being. And so he asked, 
you know, the divine, what is your name? And the answer was, I am becoming that which I am becoming, which means it's not a state of perfection. It's constantly growing, even though it's relatively perfect and very perfect in our eyes. And so I think at one time, this science of knowing what names meant was very well known and understood and accepted throughout the world. And I think it got lost somehow. Uh, my shamanic friends say that I must have known it from then and so it, I was bringing it forward with me this time. I don't know. I look at my name and say I had the observation skills and the brain that was trained in patterns to be able to bring it forward. Interesting. One, we we, we got to wrap up in about a minute. One word on commonly used names. There's certain names that every other person seems like they have. They're just, everybody's that name. So I I, I like Dwayne spelling because it's, Although it's Dwayne, you don't hear Dwayne that much, but it's spelled a little bit differently. Whereas there's certain names like Lisa that everybody has. What? Why is that? What is it about those type of names? And what does it say about those people? Or what? what is going on with there? Every culture wants to pass its cultural rituals down to the next generation. And so there are certain names that hold the cultural teachings. And if you watch in the popularity of names and which ones stay solid, those are the ones that are really teaching the cultural values. And the ones that change are the ones that are changing the cultural values as we're moving forward. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> there's there's so much fascination in this. I have to have you on again because there's just, I could go over reams and reams of everything. But I will say thank you for the information to um allow us to connect at least here in the studio and i want to just tell everybody again the website to go to but sharon do you actually help people decipher their names as a professional service i do and what i do is i ask for the parents birth names because you want to see why you have those parents and what you came to learn and it gives people new insights on why they had those particular parents and then I ask for everybody's name, starting with the birth name, all the nicknames, all to the current. And I go through all of their life and what they're doing and why they're doing it. And it explains a lot. And then it says why they're here and what's their purpose. Fabulous. So knowthename.com or bestnamemeanings.com. This is where you can find Sharon Lynn Wyeth. Nemologist, the discoverer or the person who's bringing forth this science in our particular time. Sharon Lynn Wyeth, thank you for being on Wellness for the Real World. It has been my pleasure. And remember that names help us follow our own individual paths in life. Because once we know our gifts, we can identify our talents so that we can better serve the world and ourselves. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Veronica, Wellness for the Real World. Thank you for listening to the Wellness Revolution podcast. If you want to hear more on how to bring wellness into your life, visit drveronica.com. See you all next week. Take care.